How's it going guys? Travis here from Taco Bros. I'm with my good friend Dan Miguel from Great Lakes Finesse and we're going to break down to you kind of the why, what's and how Dan made one of the most popular brands in fishing today. Yeah, so today we're going to explain to you guys kind of the premise of this amazing little finesse brand that kind of originated up here in Canada for tournament guys and, and you guys that maybe fish from the bank, from kayaks to catch really hard pressured smallmouth specifically, but they'll also catch largemouth too, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna have Dan go over why he, you know, kind of made these baits, some of the technology that has gone into them because you know, most of you guys are gonna think it's a soft plastic, it's a soft plastic. That's not the case here. There's actually a lot of thought and uh, effort that went into making these baits what they are. So if it's okay with you, let's just maybe explain to us like what, why you felt that you needed to make Grey Lakes Finesse. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really quite simple. A few of my friends and I, we, we love fishing tournaments. I've been fishing tournaments for over 20 years and we were always, you know, playing with our baits, trying to figure out how to get, you know, obviously win tournaments. And ultimately the whole brand um, stems around that mission and goal of like, you know, let's make baits that are gonna be the best and help us win tournaments. And that just happens, you know, by nature, that just means we gotta make baits that are gonna catch the biggest and most pressured fish uh, in the lake. So that's the mission, everything revolves around that mission. And even when we set out to make the brand, we either make it right or we don't do it at all. And, and I think we accomplished what we were looking to set out, like what we set out to do. And yeah, we're really excited about all this success. And you know, really it's, it's all thanks to um, the anglers kind of talking about it and letting their friends know about how great this stuff is. And it's really, really a brand that was built on word of mouth and, and support from really quality anglers. Yeah, man. So yeah, like our store is very specialized. Obviously, I mean, you've been in there, you've been, in, you were, you've been with us since we were in the, in the smaller, the smaller store, but our store is very specialized and like, it's very hard to break into the top five of sales with like big brands like Megabass, OSP, Ray, and stuff like that. Great Lakes Finesse is the only brand in our store that's in our top five in sales that is not a JDM bait. I don't know if you knew that, but that's, uh, that's, awesome. that's a fact. And then for Terminal, I think that these little tube heads that are constantly sold out are our number three overall selling out of any Terminal product in the entire store. Wow. So that, that, that's, that's a, it's pretty pretty cool and then some of the new stuff that we'll get to has obviously jumped up there a lot as well obviously you have some staple baits i'm going to start with let's break down maybe the bait that i think made you kind of brought you guys to prominent and that is going to be the to me anyways is the drop minnow yeah yeah so i'll give you this yeah and then kind of explain to me why this bait needs to be made yeah, I mean, there's a number of reasons. You know, some of the things that make Great Lakes Finesse special are attention to detail, more so than just shape. A lot of brands miss out on the small details. And, and one of those is the neutral buoyancy. So when we're talking about the drop minnow in particular, when we started this brand, we didn't even know that we were gonna have a brand until we figured out really two things were really important. One was we needed baits that could sit perfectly horizontal in the water without having to shape them constantly. Yep. Um, so that meant we had to find a material or a way to get the bait to sit perfectly horizontal in the water. And the second was, and this is something that we've been doing for, for a long, long time, and, and that's the matte finish. So we used to rub our baits in the carpet of our boat before a tournament, knock Same. the glare off. And uh, so yeah, we set out to do that. And really the drop minnow in particular, we were starting to find, you know, a, a lot of offshore bites happening. Um, drop shot is a big thing up here. Huge, yep. And being able to, and, and as you know, we're fishing like, you know, Lake Ontario or these Great Lakes, a lot of the fishing is very isolated pieces of structure. And if you're not on that piece of structure, you might not get bit. And, and smallmouth love to like cruise in and out of the area. So having a bait that we could feel confident in, in the profile, being a minnow bait, the neutral buoyancy and knowing that if we drop the bait on that boulder, for example, we could let it sit there and just wiggle it and not move that bait at all. And it would be sitting perfectly horizontal. That's something that, you know, there's a lot of companies that, you know, might say their baits sit perfectly yep. neutral and stuff, but that's, that's, if you actually put them in, you know, your sink or your tub, you'll notice that they either float or they sink. And so they, they go tail up. Or yeah, yeah. They look really unnatural. So I think, you know, the success of the drop minnow is really, in those two details more so than the profile it you know it's such a, a welcoming size you know every fish will eat a bait this size yep. and uh especially big pressured fish you know they're they're hounded all the time with big tight like big baits so having a smaller profile 
we have found that as we go smaller, we're having more success. So, so weaker, smaller bite. Yeah. Right? And the other, I mean, what really helped with this is we partnered with one of the most renowned smallmouth anglers of the North here, Travis Manson, yep. um, on YouTube, he's Smallmouth Crush. And he helped with the design of this bait. And and together with his brain and, and our brain and, and all that knowledge, I mean, we're talking between our team and his, we're talking about years, like probably 50 years in tournament experience. So yep. um, I think that's why, at the end of the day, it catches fish like crazy. And that's yeah. why um, it's so popular. Well, it's become like a really good multi-purpose bait as well because you know you throw on the back of like a sneaky underspin, which I mean, yep. we can just look at that right away. Yeah, we got one here. Yeah. So this is this has become like our out of standalone underspins. This is this is our our preferred one in the shop for sure. Yep. And then paired up specifically with the with the uh, drop drop minnow. Yep. Um, that's that's kind of like the go-to. So yeah, yeah. Um, I think what makes this underspin so unique, uh, you know, there's a, a lot on the market, but we really dialed in the details that we felt mattered. The first is it's built on a Gamagatsu fine wire hook. The reason for that is, again, we're after Huge pressured, importance. big pressured yeah. fish. So we need light line, long rods. We're taking long casts and we found with a thicker hook, we just couldn't get good hook penetration, especially in those first couple cranks. Yep. We would set the hook with our light line, our long rods, and that fish would just shake the bait so building it on a finer wire gamagatsu hook having the eye placement right at the front of the head so up here we're a, a lot of times we're fishing around milfoil or sparse vegetation and the weeds just don't get caught in that little eye like they would if the eye was set back a little bit most underspins ride nose down looks pretty unnatural ours rides perfectly horizontal through the water column and then the stainless ball bearing components. We were just, when we set out to make this, it was like, how do we make the most premium underspin, finesse underspin for us so that we could win tournaments? And then, yeah, the drop middle pairs perfectly with it. Again, we, we tend to like more subtle action. Yep. So we find that tail back there behind the blade, that little bit of vibration, the tail kind of just wiggles in random directions. And we find on most days, it'll have a fish a paddle tail. That said, we still fish little swim baits on this too. I like throwing them with a paddle tail, but the second that I noticed, if I go down to a lake and there's a lot of boats out there, I almost always take the paddle tail right off and then I go to something, you know, exactly like this with a pintail yeah. because pressured fish, you know, that flash is gonna do most of the job drawing them in. And then also with yours, I like the view of the arm coming down to get kick that blade out a little bit better. It's gonna obviously help with hookup ratio because they're not gonna have the blade jamming into the mouth as well. Yeah. And then it's gonna give it a little bit of a bigger profile or more of a, no group profile for them too. Yeah, right? I, I will talk about the blade real quick. This is yep. something that we put a lot of thought into. Two reasons, most underspins the blades too close to the body. So if you're using like a fatter swim bait or a, you know just a, a wider bodied bait, what happens is when you're reeling these real slow or even a little bit quicker, the blade will actually end up lifting and cupping right under the bait and stop spinning. The second thing is the reason why we went with the wire and this is kind of a this is the first time I'm actually kind of revealing this. Perfect, love it. So if you think about the fish eating it, when they're eating it, this actually, when they close their mouth and you set the hook, by nature, this wire makes the hook bury right into the nose, or like into the roof of the mouth. If you were to use a smaller wire, just a little blade underneath, you're not getting that leverage when you're setting the hook and burying it as hard because it's almost like a double hook set because you're setting it, Yep. but you're also getting just the, the angle leverage. is forcing the, the hook to go into the, the roof of the mouth of the fish. So we got really good hookups. You know, sometimes people use heavier equipment than they should be with this underspin. A lot. Um, I always tell people like, think about like a drop shot hook. Like you're not gonna use crazy power on a drop shot hook. Those things set themselves. Pretty much the same thing with our sneaky underspin. Just take your time with the fish and you're gonna land them. Well, I throw this pretty much on like on like a hair jig spy bait rod when I throw these. So yeah. like, I like some, I know you like long rods. You have a little bit of a weird rod thing going on, but <laughs> I like a, like a longer seven, six, like medium light. Well, that's what I, this. that's what I use. My, okay, hair, my hair jig rod is exactly what I use for Yeah, that. okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, so hair jig rod, if you guys are throwing on your spins, especially this one, um, throw on a hair jig rod. Yeah. Okay, so from there, let's go to flat cat. This is one that I think a lot of guys don't really understand. Um, mm -hmm. It looks it looks kind of goofy, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but I know that Chris loves this thing in the shop, beating us up pretty bad on it a couple times, and he's kind of converted me to start to throw this. But I'll let you I'll let you explain why this thing is, <laughs> exists. So when we designed this bait, we kind of knew that it wouldn't be the most sexy looking bait in the lineup for really the untrained 
I, for someone who might not fish tournaments like crazy, this doesn't look like much of a bait, but I can tell you some of the best anglers really like that it doesn't sell well because they buy the crap out of it. Yep. It could very well be our best fish catcher in the whole lineup. And um, it was actually inspired by a baby catfish. Okay. So one of our local lakes here where I've done really well on, I kind of keyed in that they were feeding on baby catfish for a good portion of the season. And we set out to build a bait with that profile. We also wanted when we designed this final version, like the version we used to throw is different than this one. This one still does exactly the same thing. It catches them even better because I think this one now mimics small goby, a small leech. It just a really natural. A un... lot like a goby. Yeah, a lot like a little goby. Yep. So whatever they're kind of keying in on on that day, they're they're going to eat this because they just can't let it go by them. Uh, it's got the matte finish, the neutral buoyancy, and little scuff marks. You'll notice with some of our baits too, they got little ribs in them. They're yep. kind of random little ribs. Those are to imitate teeth marks. Um, so we found as our baits got beat up more with fish eating them, yep. they got more effective. So right out of the package, we wanted to add those little little lines to make it look like they've been chewed on already. Yeah, no, 100%, man. And this this just looks like it belongs on the bottom of the lake. Yeah. Yeah, so like it, it kind of fits every, you know, bottom profile, I, for sure it does. Yeah. Um, and pairs up really well with, with this guy. Yeah, that's our stealth Yeah, ball so this is the ball head. The hook is kind of the, the big deal here. Yep. Gammy, 604, mm -hmm. 604 Gammy. Really tough to beat these uh, to beat these hooks. Generally, we find mm -hmm. with the stealth ball head and the baits that we're using, those are more close contact or close quarter uh, fishing situations. Yep. So we found with the bottom baits, um, we prefer to go with a thicker gauge hook. Agreed. Sometimes we even go with thicker line when we're using them. Yep. So that's why we went with the thicker hook there. We actually, when we first built the underspin, we started with that hook. Okay. And we found we were losing too many fish. And that's why we decided, okay, we gotta go with a thinner gauge hook. That solved a lot of our problems. We ended up going from losing like one out of four fish to losing like one out of like, maybe like one or two out of 10. Okay. So our ratio got a lot better with these big fish. Um, you know, the ball head, I do wanna speak to it. I, at first glance, it looks, it looks just like a ball head. You're thinking, oh man, there's nothing to it. Well few things that make this really premium. One is the powder coat and bait finish. We're fishing a lot around rocks here. We're banging them off the bottom all day. So that's not gonna chip. But also in the manufacturing, we cover the eye so that there's no paint or residue. So you don't need to bust that paint out. And, and it's not gonna nick up your line. No, exactly. Yeah. And we're using like five, six pound tests a lot of the time. So having a clean eye is important. And even in the painting, we take care not to cover the collar because if you put paint on that collar, it's gonna round the edges up and it's gonna make it less grippy. So we keep it just fully unpainted. So the head's painted, the collar's not. A lot of detail goes into this little guy to make it the best we can. We can. That's why I like this, your, your brand too, man. Like everything is like thought out. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not just like, oh, let's make a ball head because we need one. It's like, let's make a ball head, make sure nothing's gonna nick up the line. The collar is gonna be, you know, it's gonna have a good hold on it. And obviously the hook is amazing. I, I love yep. any hooks forever. Yeah. Okay, so another one that is, I mean, it looks just like a regular worm bait, but this is the drop worm. So yeah. talk to me about this guy. So yeah, I mean, this is a really competitive category. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of drop shot worms out on the market, really solid brands. I think for us, we actually love fishing a worm a lot of the time. And when we figure out how to do the drop, uh, sorry, the matte finish and the neutral buoyancy and the durability, we just felt like we had to make a worm. It's probably a little bigger than most of the baits that we would have normally, but we just felt it was necessary. We felt it separated this worm from others on the market. So if you like fishing a worm on a drop shot, on a ball head or something, just a, a little finesse worm, it's a really good one. Well, to touch on durability, because that's something we haven't talked about yet. These are crazy, crazy durable. Like it's, you can catch, I mean, I know, I mean, would you? Yeah. Pounds, yeah. Yeah, like they don't they don't rip up. Like I mean, they're not they're a fairly it's an affordable pack of baits, but they also last really good. I mean, everybody likes elastomer stuff. I'm not always the biggest fan of it because I think it takes away from a lot of the natural action to it. Mm -hmm. But you've somehow kind of given like a very ultra durable bait. It's kind of in between like an elastomer durability and then like one fish throw away. You know, it's it's a it's a really really good balance and yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that's why people gravitate back to it because it's, it's, you're not just catching, you know, you get eight baits in a pack, you're not catching eight fish, like you're catching eight, 10 fish per bait. Yeah, um, yeah, we hear that a lot. A yeah. lot of our dealers even say, you know, 
we'd love if they would like tear <laughs> up a little more. We'd sell more bags. So, but yeah, you know, exa exactly what you said. Um, there, like that. I guess there's a lot of names for it, but that it's a last. It's a lastimer. Um, there's a, a number of reasons why I'm not a huge fan of it. Like I've used it, but rigging is challenging. Yep. It doesn't have that action. So having, when we started the brand, it was durability because at the end of the day, we're trying to create value for our customers. Yep. Um, value is you know, baits that are gonna last and baits that are gonna catch fish in our eyes. So durability, matte finish, neutral buoyancy, and when we're doing baits that should be floating, there'll be some floating in there to make sure they look really natural. Sweet. Yep. Okay, so this is my personal favorite from like all the OG baits, and that's a snack crawl. So this is like, I we throw a lot of, you know, more finesse style football jigs. That's what kind of put me onto this. Um, and then we also throw a lot of unskirted football jigs. So this has kind of been my go-to for that for quite some time. I know a bunch of guys this year on the St. Lawrence in the early season, like I can, the three guys caught their personal best on this color right here. Sorry, Ashy, but <laughs> yeah. Touch on this one. Why did you think that this needed to be made? Yeah, there is nothing on the market like it. Agreed. Uh, you know, up here in the north, our craws tend to be really small. So there's been many tournaments where I'm in a pre-fish or whatever, or you know I'm just boxing fish and I look in my live well and there's little tiny craws yep. in there. And I remember there was a tournament here on a local lake, uh, Tri Lakes. Um, I was so frustrated because I, I figured out um, that they were eating these little tiny craws, and I went on this crazy hunt looking for a bait that would do with just this. Yep. And nothing existed. That was why this was created. Like again, a lot of baits look really cool in the package or they've got a cool profile, but they don't perform in the water. We're always water focused. So we wanted a bait not only that looked that was the right profile. It but looks badass in the package too, by the it, way. Yeah, it looks good in the package. But you know when you think about a craw, you know, we always envision the fish following the bait. So if a craw is being followed by a smallmouth, for example, the smallmouth is looking at them, and what what, what are the claws doing? They're lit, they're facing the fish, trying to defend, right? They're not standing straight up. You know, a lot of super floating baits on the market are. So when we design this bait, I think what you might, what people don't realize is the detail and time that we spent to get the right amount of floating in here. I was gonna say you you corrected me first. Right when you came, you're like, dude, you keep saying it's neutral, but yeah. like, this one has this one's floating. This one has floating right. in it, and. There's two things. It was a combination of the amount of floating and also the little cuts in the under the under the arms to give it the right amount of lift. We went through, it's got to be like 20 versions of how deep we went with these cuts and how much floating to get it to do to sit perfectly, and it always sit at a 45 degree angle. Wow. So that's what triggers these fish to bite. It's that's those amazing. little details, and that's really the process. When we when we start and go, okay, we're gonna come up with a product. We don't go. What are people gonna buy? Yeah. We're on the water all the time and we're trying to solve a problem that we're facing. So we've got fish in front of us and we, we can't get them to bite with what we've got and we're going, what would work? And we always start with that. It always starts with a piece, a piece of paper. What are the things that the bait needs to do? Yep. And then we're gonna go from there. Well, that solved the problem for me, but this was the thing that really sold me on your brand. I so, remember that. Yeah, I was, I was always looking for, I, I throw little tubes, like that's, I've thrown, you know, the two and a half inch version of tubes forever. Periodically we'll get into the three and a halves, but I could never really find a good tube hook. And then you brought this into the shop. And this head, for whatever reason, I mean obviously there's a reason that it's flat and how it comes to the water. It doesn't get hung up. This hook is very, very durable. It doesn't bend out and it has really good hook penetration, which is like I'm again, I hate on mustad so much for yeah. for being mustad, I guess, but this hook in particular is is exactly what I needed. They got this hook right. Yeah, I like, agree with a lot of what you're saying. Like I'm generally, you'll notice that gammy. we're gammy across the board. Yep. This hook in particular, they got right. We yeah. don't lose fish with it. I've had opportunities to switch to other brands, but because this hook in particular does what it needs to do, I haven't switched. Yeah, like I've converted, I don't know, hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of people to this hook because I'm like such a passionate tube angler that finding the right hook. I'm like, oh, I'll share it with my buddies. And this, again, this is one of our best selling terminal pieces in the store by a lot. So yeah, I don't know if you want to touch on this anymore. I, I'm sure yeah. there's a reason why you made the head that shape. Yeah, but. yeah, for sure. So I, I mean, I've won more money on tubes than anything else, yep, fishing tournaments. So for me, a few things, like everyone can relate to this. We lose a lot of fish on tubes. Yep. Um, biggest reason in my mind is the hook placement. Yep. So again, when we started, when we set out to design this head, it was how do we make a head that is going to help us land more fish? 
it's going to it's of course it needs to fit the smaller tubes perfectly yep. which we figured that out when you're going to have a problem with leverage right away because you're yep. looking for a small tube head and you need the weight to keep that bottom contact yeah so exactly yeah. so short shank hook the second thing is a lot of the reason why we lose a lot of fish is because most of the tube heads on the market are very rounded yep and what happens is the tube wants to roll so two things happen there one is you get you get hung up a lot and two, you're hooking them in the side of the fish. Like you're not getting into the meat in the roof. Like yep. the small mouth in particular, the best place you can hook them is like in the cheeks or right in the roof of the mouth. You're gonna land those fish generally. It's when you skin hook them on the side or below that you're gonna lose them. So when we designed this sled, the whole point of it was to keep the hook, um, always the hook point always facing up. So it naturally wants to hit the bottom. And when you're pulling it through the rocks, it always kind of comes back to that center position. Yep. A, you're coming through the rocks well, or the whatever zebra beds or whatever you're fishing, hard bottom, uh, sand, uh, it's gonna stay up. But also you're, when you're setting the hook, it's always gonna be in that perfect position to hook them in the roof of the mouth. You know, there are occasions where maybe they hit it funny and you're not getting it, but I'd say 80% of the fish that I hook with this I is in that meat. Ratio. Great it's right in the meat. And we just don't lose fish. No, I have an amazing hookup ratio yeah. with this, and I like how I like how it sits in the water. I like the size of it. I like there's not. I have no complaints about this thing. Yeah. And like you know, again, we've had discussions about a yeah. lot of discussions about hooks. Um, it's funny that is the the that was what got us into your store. I remember yeah. like thinking, man, I want to get into Pure Pro Tackle because in my mind. I've always felt like that's the premier destination for like the top anglers yep. um, to find the coolest stuff. So getting our brand in there and, and I remember you being, you know, obviously you need to be, but you were kind of like, okay, let's, let's see, is this just another brand coming in to sell me their stuff? And that was, I remember you took a small tube, one of your favorites, you shoved it in there and yeah. you went, man, that's perfect. Yep. And that was kind of like, you're like, okay, hey, I'm in. And uh, I think it kind of proved that we knew what we were doing a little bit too. Yep. And uh, yeah, thankfully, uh, you, I mean, you guys were the first ones to ever carry your stuff. So this is the, yeah, this is uh, ground zero. And now look at you, you're massive. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of plastics that I like, obviously, like I like the snack craw, I like some of the other stuff we're gonna talk about, but this was the one that kind of sold me on it because it was literally impossible to find a proper tube head yeah. for the smaller tube. Three and a half, three, seven, five. There's tons of tubes, great ones out there. I agree. Um, but yeah, for that little one, this is, I mean, this is the only one. I, I don't know what, I don't know what other one you would use, right? This yeah. is, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then when you guys expanded all the sizes, it was really the only one. Cause I mean, you can, you can go as light or as heavy as you want now. So yeah, again, it comes back <clears throat> to solving a problem on paper. For us, it was, we love those little tubes and we had the same problem. We yep. could not find a good hook. So we made our own. Well, I'd love to segue to what this goes with but i think we're gonna save that to last because i think that's been okay the thing that's been very 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 exciting for people okay so that was kind of what took you guys through the first couple of years those were the main products that were in the line and like they did great i mean the growth yeah. the growth i could see it every time we would reorder i'd be like holy crap we're out of that again we just got it and that was kind of what took you guys to the next level and then what was it was it it was classic this year that seems so it seems like it was so long ago. I know, it was just a couple months ago. Yeah, so a couple months ago, you guys did your first big release since your initial stuff. Yeah. There was a bunch of products, but we're going to talk, we'll, let's, we'll start with the plastics, the Helgramite. Yeah. So this is a very popular bait up here. Guys win tons of tournaments on, on Helgramites, but you felt that there was a hole that you could fill. Yeah. Okay, so talk to me about this guy. I mean, really... Um... A few things. We've been fishing Helgramites for a long time. Like the first one I ever fished was actually a Berkeley Gulp Helgramite. It was really small. Yep. And we actually caught a lot of fish on them. And uh, but it was just kind of small. It featureless. It had no movement at all. Uh, and then there's some other ones that have come around. But I felt like there just wasn't one in that perfect size for our fishery. I just I felt like most of the ones on the market were really designed for the southern market, the largemouth spotted bass or creek fishing. So this is two two point four. This is two point right? four inches. So this most is, of them are three. Most of them are three. That's three plus, right? Three, three plus. Yep. Bigger, bulkier. Yep. Um, and also the matte finish. Like we really felt like most of the ones on the market were really like shiny. Oh and yeah. I, I just I could see it. Like we'd be drop shotting the one. There's a couple on the market that I like, but they float a lot, so they're yep. good for the bottom. But on a drop shot, they were just no good. So really. We wanted to drop shot a Helgramite, and uh, so this one's got the neutral buoyancy, the matte finish, 
that's where for me this bait really excels especially on the clear water lakes this thing on a drop shot is absolutely incredible. I, I i completely agree yeah first time i ever threw it yeah like first fish we saw we threw it and it like from 30 feet away it came over we could see it and it just smoked it and we knew we had winter yeah and like we we've discussed this on on here before um like i throw a lot of helgramites as well the other brand I generally fish that on bottom because that that ultra high float and it's it just does not work on a drop shot. Yeah. So this this is that like that's kind of what separates this is the size. I like yep. the smaller size, less intimidating for a fish, especially when they're big and pressure. They've seen a lot of stuff, and also like on a drop shot. Like yep. that's what really makes this one special. I, I I can't agree more. Another thing you guys came out with at Bassmaster was the swim bait head and then the hanging head. Yep. They look identical to everybody. Yep. I think this is something that you need to explain. Like, I, I mean, I can see it and I understand, but yep. I think this is a good thing for you to like spend a little bit of time on explaining the difference yeah. between the two. Cause I get asked all the time and I, I kind of break it down for them and they still are like, Oh, well, like that makes that big of a difference. I'm like huge difference. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, so both heads, I mean, at first glance you're thinking, man, that's the same head, Yep. but completely different applications and you need both head designs to achieve what you're trying to do. So we'll start with the, the sneaky swim bait head. We love little swim baits. We fish them all the time. Yep. Very much like we fish the, the underspin. A lot like our hair jig rods, we're bombing them out there, light line. Yep. So having uh, a jig head that had the, gam the, the, the fine wire Gamagatsu hook, the forward eye placement, just like our, think about our sneaky underspin, just without the blade, everything's the same besides that. So it pairs perfectly for a little swim bait, but also something that we kind of reveal and let the cat out of the bag on is um, the Cindy rig. So the Cindy rig is a little sneaky technique that we is actually, it actually originates from one of my good friends. His wife, his wife was named Cindy. Okay. And I'll tell you this here. I'll, I'll just give yeah, it a story. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the story is good friend, Steve Delier, local legend. He's kind of retired from the tournament scene, but really well accomplished and really was in my mind, the pioneer of this super finesse for smallmouth fishing. So he was on, out on Lake Simcoe with his wife one day and he was dragging tubes and much like me, like when I'm in the zone, I don't care what anyone's doing around me. I just oh, want to yeah. fish. Well, his wife was back there and he gave her a tube, but she didn't know how to use it and he didn't take the time to explain it. This so she my, was my, casting it out and just reeling it in. Dude, that's my brother. Straight. Yeah. My brother, my brother works at a store, can't fish, literally smashes them swimming a tube. Yeah, yeah. It's so crazy. He, so yeah, so he, he calls me and I'm like, he tells me the story and I'm like, okay, all, all of a sudden my mind is going nuts, right? Like light bulbs are going yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, Cindy was just smashing them, just reeling this thing straight. So that's when we started just straight reeling a minnow. Yep. And be, obviously we're tournament anglers. At the time, we didn't want anyone to know about it. So we called the Cindy rig. We could talk openly about it and no one would know what we're talking about. Right. So we developed that technique. We're, when we got the drop minnow, it's perfect for that technique. And, uh, and that head um, pairs perfectly with that. So Luke Palmer, um, ended up getting a second place on the Cindy rig. It's kind of out, cat out of the bag now, wired to fish, Bassmaster, all these guys have kind of picked up that story. Yep. So this head is perfect for a small swim bait and Cindy rigging because it swims perfectly horizontal through the water. It's got the fine wire hook and that forward eye placement is better for a better, more natural um, swimming action when you're casting and reeling a bait horizontally through the water column. So let's get into the hanging head. The hanging head, is completely different. It's designed for the more up and down vertical presentation. So what we found over the last few years, yeah, moping, moping, hanging a minnow, the Miki rigging, yep. there's a million names for it. So we've found over the last few years that it's become very effective for smallmouth out on the Great Lakes. A lot of people weren't talking about it. No, um, no. They naturally. Didn't, they didn't want to talk <laughs> about it, but it is insanely effective. Um, at first we found that like the fish were below the boat and we could just hold the bait below the boat get them a bite. This was year, like many years ago. Yep. Then we started um, with forward facing sonar. We could see them all and we would start swinging the bait over their heads. Now, what we're finding is everyone's onto this technique. Yep. Gustafson kind of gave gave the, like left the cat of the bag of the classic. If anyone doesn't know, this is a bass master classic winning technique. And now everyone's doing it. So what we found in the last couple of years is that we'd get onto these fish and they're just not biting like they used to. And the solution to our problem was going down the lighter line, longer rods. Yep. And we found that there's times where we're going down to three pound test line. So it's crazy. You're crazy. That's three man. pound test line. And you know, this comes back down to my steelhead days. I'm right. a steelheader, so I have confidence in landing a five pound smallmouth 
if I have confidence catching a 20 pound steelhead on three or four pound tests. So what we're finding is the jig heads we were using, we were just losing too many fish because we couldn't get enough leverage on the hook set with the light line and the light, the whip your rod. So that's where we came up with this head where the eye placement is further back on the head. So you don't need to mess with your knot. We balanced every single one of them on the jig head. And with the finer, with a finer wire hook, the Gamagatsu hook, we're able to basically, the fish basically set themselves and we lose way less fish with light line. So it's, it really is fairly technique specific. If you're doing that moping, Demiki rig, pitching out and letting it hover, we find in like 20 to 40 feet of water, that's where this hanging head will really excel. Hopefully that answers your questions on that. Yeah, so we've been doing something similar to that for a long time on just ball heads. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like you said, like there's there's obviously issues with it, but there was never anything that really existed yep. that would you could use specifically for that. I know now there's a bunch of stuff that everybody's kind of scrambling to come out with, but um, this one has definitely been really good for us, so, especially. So the biggest problem with that most people face with a ball head, and I'll, I'll kind of illustrate yep. that here. Yep. So the eye placement, if you do this technique, you generally are always pushing your knot further back to get it to sit perfectly horizontal. Most of them aren't balanced at all. So what happens Adam. is you you set the hook, you miss a fish down in 40 feet of water, all of a sudden your knot is now at the front and your bait's sitting like that. And that fish isn't interested anymore. So this head, you don't need to m manipulate the knot. We balanced it perfectly. So no matter what, no matter where your knot is, it's gonna sit perfectly horizontal. Yep. So that, if you pull your bait up out of 40 feet of water and you think that fish is going to be there when you drop back down, he's not. Yep. So being able to stay down there, that's just one or two extra bites in the day. For us, that could be the difference between winning the tournament or not even cashing a check. So yeah, little stuff like this is literally why I want to do this. Like, yeah. like people don't understand like the little intricate differences between stuff that make huge differences. Like you yeah. just said, yeah, if you think if you think you're gonna get that number one, getting the bait back down to that perfect position in 40 feet of water, like that thing has to fall a long way. Your line's doing stuff. There's current. There's wind. It's yep. it's generally pretty hard to get it back into the exact same spot. And then the fish are moving. Like I mean, absolutely, you can't afford to bring it 40 like exactly 30 40 feet. You can't afford to bring that all the way up just to fix your knot and throw it back out. Things things change instantaneously. So that exact reason is why I wanted to do this. Yeah, so. and it all comes back down to solving problems, right? We face these problems where we love these techniques, they work, how can we make it better? And that's just an example. I mean, it looks like a do nothing jig head, but it solves so many problems for someone who wants to do this technique. Absolutely. All right, I think we waited long enough for this one. So this is this thing kind of broke the fishing industry this year i would say <laughs> this is a really really cool 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 tube bait so this is going to be the juvie craw i'm sure everybody here has heard about it by now this yep. is i think this would be the number one selling fishing lure this this year anyways i think in the store it is um if you can get them yeah right yeah this is one that's like again i'm a huge tube fisherman so seeing something new in the in the tube space is like it's not very common you don't generally yep. get anything new you got you know you have your tube and that's that's kind of what you work with so this is something that i was really excited to see this is something that we've utilized a lot i showed you the video of one of my good friends catching a fish and literally freaking out and being like shout out to my boy dan and blah blah, yeah. blah, blah. i know taking all of my guys out this year on the water uh four of them had new personal best on the juvie crawl yeah so pretty pretty cool go into this thing this is this is one that is 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 wicked yeah i mean it all comes back to my roots of being a tube angler again one more money on tubes than anything else and we know they love craws in the rocks and i just i felt like you know the tube category hasn't really evolved the bass are seeing the same profiles over and over again they're rolling over they look goofy we talked about um, this a lot like, yeah we, like you know what i mean like we talked yeah. about how there was nothing really new and it had just been the same thing yeah. over and over so you know when i was thinking about you know how do we make a tube even better um giving it a realistic profile but also not too junky like i mean too exaggerated where you know, there, there's a fine balance, um, and I, I don't know if this relates to you, but there's a fine balance between too much realism yep. and not enough. It still needed to be a tube. It needed to be a tube, and it also couldn't look like a real crayfish. I don't know what it is, but when I buy these baits that I look agree, like man. actual baits, 
I Man, on, the, agree. on the shelf, they look amazing, but they just don't catch fish. They catch um, anglers. They catch anglers. Yep. And so that was like really for me, uh, like a fine balance of, of design. Um, so when I was thinking about the applications, it was dragging the tube, hopping the tube, crap, like crap. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with the tube. So having a craw profile in the tube, I just felt like just unlocked a whole new opportunity, a whole new bite yep. um, for us. And then as well, our mini pro two head was so popular. So building a bait on top of that design for us was just such a win-win and uh, so yeah, it's got like floating claws. That's something most tubes on the market, um, they're naturally, um, they're just full of salt. So one they piece don't, of plastic, they're yeah. one piece of plastic. Shred it, go. Yeah, so these, these little claws and these tentacles will actually lift and they look really natural in the water. The other thing too that is so subtle and most people don't realize is we flatten the bottom of the bait. So most tubes when you're, again, they want to roll. So this thing will always land on its belly and sit perfectly on its belly on the bottom you're getting better hook sets, it comes through the water and they just love eating this thing. You know, the hookup ratio, you know, we we would try to use like full piece craw baits and we thread them onto a hook and drag them through. I mean, even the snack craw, I mean, that's an example of a bait where like, it's awesome, this bait is incredible, but you don't get, to get a good same, hook set, it's not the same and you don't get that more beefy compact yep. profile. Because it's a tube, when that fish bites down, it wants to collapse, so much gap there to get a good hook set. You just don't lose fish. The other thing that's kind of sneaky, a lot of things, we went through so many iterations of this, but even when we were designing it, we thought, what if we w could make it so it came through some of the grass? That's, you know, we fish a lot of grass, like milfoil rock weed yep. lines. When we were designing it, we actually designed it so there's more meat right in the head so that if we wanted, I got to manipulate this thing a little bit, like you can actually kind of bury yeah. The, the hook right in the tip there and it'll make it weeless but you'll still get a really good hookup um, if you're around some grass and you feel like you need a weedless presentation but you want to keep the uh, the tube going right and yeah. then and then also with the tentacles it gives you literally a perfect spot for that tube to line up yeah every time. yeah we actually wanted the um, where we ended up lining the bait up we wanted it to actually put a bit of pressure on the hook shank so that the tentacles would want to lift a little bit in the water so it just that little bit of pressure there's these little details it just keeps the the face up and the tentacles lifting it's yeah it's, it, it's a smash it kind of almost like bunches up the body a little bit too so it looks bigger but it still collapses yeah. perfectly right yeah so. exactly so yeah it's just a very <laughs> versatile bait you can use it you know anywhere anywhere craws are um and we all know how effective tubes are so combining a Number craw one. with a tube yeah, like, I mean, I'm the most hardcore tube guy of all time. I yeah. have, I don't even know how many tube rods I have. It's just, I'm addicted to it. It's like yeah. my favorite thing in the world to do, and it's so dumb. Yeah, it's it, it seems like it would be the most boring thing, but it's it's the funnest thing for me. So yeah, I mean, and the other thing too is because of the material we have, like, there's a lot of things here that if you were using a soft material, you wouldn't be able to achieve. Yep, like these little tentacles. If you use a soft material, <sighs> like most baits on the market, they would just tear right away. Yep. You can catch 20 fish on this Easily. bait and it will still look the same when you're, you know, you've caught those fish. It might be rubbed up a little bit, but it's going to be intact. Dude, I did it like, a, it's not really an experiment, but I have a scent that I brought back from Japan with me. I think I showed you that yep. little container that I put this in and I put another bait into it and it kind of went a little bit weird. Um, I actually opened the container on the weekend and pulled one out of it. It was exactly the same. Like nothing yep. had changed. It had been in there for three months in this solution absorbing the scent so yeah that was, that was actually really cool to see yeah and that and you know what you bring up a really good point scent is something that we get asked about all the time this brand really was built on you know being a smallmouth brand that's how it originated we don't use any scent there's two reasons one is we were focused on with the bassies smallmouth are visual feeders yep. they make their bite decision based on what they see scent is so overhyped in this industry i agree but the other thing that we also found as hardcore anglers is we do use scent occasionally on certain bodies of water, but it always changes. Like on certain lakes, a certain scent works, other places not. So we also, when we were coming up with this, we wanted a material that we could add scent if we wanted to, but not be committed to one scent. Like most brands in the market, they've got one scent yep. in, their, in their bait. And, and then if you well, add, it's mixing. It's mixing, yep. it just doesn't seem natural. This, you just choose, there's a lot, like pretty much all the scents are available. Bring your own scent. Or, yeah, just bring your own scent. Yeah. And full <laughs> disclosure, <laughs> we use scent 
20 percent of the time i'd say yeah i'm not a scent guy at all yeah. uh that 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 thing that i brought back from japan was like a very hyped up product to me by one of my good friends over there he's like you must try this i don't know if it worked but i know that these are durable enough to withstand sitting in it for three months yeah so. yeah sent them up we yeah. use scent we yeah. absolutely use scent again this is a really cool really cool brand one of the most popular in the shop um i'm very proud to have it in the shop i'm glad you keep innovating and making unique products that are are new to market it's it's nice to see that you know what i'm like with yeah you know people kind of digging into other people's stuff and it's a reason why we don't have a lot of a lot of other brands in the store i like things to be unique and and i'm happy that you guys have always continued to do that even with the business evolving over the last couple of years i th i feel like you guys have always stuck to that um stuck to your roots where it's you're only making things that are needed uh, you're not making stuff just to just to make it, and I'm yeah. and I'm and I'm very happy with that, and I'm and I'm sure you're happy with that, and everyone you work with is happy with that. So. Yeah, yeah, it's way more fun to be innovative and do cool new things, and yeah, you know, just knock stuff off. Yeah, exactly, man. And and this is such a knockoff industry. Like, it's uh, it's it's refreshing to see, especially someone in North America make their own unique product so well i appreciate that yeah, and i mean it's an honor to be in your show in your store i tell people i mean i've been to japan yep and i've seen those shops and yep. i tell everyone that i know you don't need to fly to japan just go to peterborough pro tackle and uh it's a really cool experience you've never been there so i appreciate yeah, it man. yeah i you guys are important to me and as much as we've had success a lot of that is it stems from the relationships and one of those relationships is with you guys and i appreciate it's it been man. awesome i'm gonna just do one more thing that i really like that you guys changed in your packaging so if you guys are looking to try some of these baits out, they're gonna come they're gonna come in a little package like this. But something that you guys have done that I really, really liked is put rigging options and target species. Now the target species, maybe take that with a grain of salt. A large amount's gonna eat this, you're gonna catch pike, you're gonna catch crop, you're gonna catch everything. But the rigging options I thought was really unique. This is a, this is a 2.1 inch snack craw, for instance. You guys have it down here as dragging or ned rig. G, uh, jig trailer or Jico or free rig. I agree with all three. I think that's amazing. So if you're just getting into fishing, this is another really good brand because it can kind of give you some insight on profiles and how, you know, guys who maybe are a little bit more experienced or guys who have been fishing these techniques a lot longer, uh, kind of what you're doing with them. And I like to see that type of stuff on the, on the actual packaging. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a really, at the end of the day, this this micro finesse, no one really does it. Yep. So part of our mission is not only to create the baits, but provide the education so that people have success with the product. So we try to do everything we can to, to educate our customers and, and they know how to have success when they buy one of our baits. So yeah, that's awesome. Yep. You didn't have hook recommendations on here, hook size recommendations. So yep. that's really, really cool. Yep. All right, well, thank you, man, for, uh, for breaking this down for us. Um, really looking forward to see what you guys have in the future. Absolutely, man, for All right. sure. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Yep.